Show, don't tell is a very useful creative writing technique. What's the difference between showing and telling? When a writer tells, they present information simply by stating it. For example, Gavin was hungry and craving a donut. Writing that tells tends to be passive and distant, and can often feel like the writer is simply providing a summary of events, rather than actually telling a story. Writing that shows describes actions and makes the reader infer emotions and other information. That is, it makes the reader do some work. Writing that shows uses descriptive language, actions and dialogue to bring the story to life. It creates a more memorable reading experience. For example, Gavin's stomach growled loudly as he eyed the freshly baked donuts. Here are another couple of examples of each. He was feeling bored. She was fishing. He yawned lazily and glanced at the clock. Perched at the water's edge, she cast her line with a graceful flick of her wrist. Can you see that these two tell information? They are like summaries of situations. These two, however, are examples of writing that show. They describe. Let's look at a few strategies we can use to show rather than tell in our writing. Number one, describe emotions through body language. Rather than simply labeling the emotion, Describe emotions through body language. Here are some words that simply tell of emotions. Instead, consider the physical reactions we could describe in our characters to show the reader how a character is feeling. Instead of bored, the character could yawn, sigh, glance at their watch, or speak in a monotone voice. Instead of excited, they could use expressive hand gestures, laugh, jump up and down. Rather than scared, the character could sweat, breathe rapidly, have a dry mouth or a rapid heart rate. Instead of nervous, the character could fidget, tap their foot or pace back and forth. Compare the difference between these two examples. Rick was scared and Rick felt the knot in his stomach tighten, prickling beads of sweat formed on his forehead. Can you see that this is much more effective? Number two, describe the setting and show how the characters interact with it. For example, instead of simply stating the old mansion was eerie, we might write Strange shadows danced on the mansion's cracked windows, and a chilling draught clawed its way through every room. The floorboards groaned and creaked beneath each step, as if whispering long-forgotten secrets. Or instead of saying it was a rainy day in the city, we could provide details showing this. For example, raindrops pattered against the pavement as pedestrians scurried by underneath their umbrellas. By including details about all five senses, we can immerse the reader in the story. Number three, carefully choose details. Consider the details we present to the reader to show more information about characters. Let's imagine a character who loves to play the guitar. Instead of stating this, we could write, In the corner of Alex's room, a well-worn guitar stood proudly. The wall next to his bed was plastered with framed concert posters showing his favourite guitarists. Number four, use dialogue to show personality and feelings. The way a character speaks can say a lot about them. Let's imagine a game of basketball 
between two characters. One who is supremely confident, and the other who is nervous about the game. Consider how we might write dialogue to show the reader each character's personality. Now, it's also important not to overuse the show-don't-tell technique. If you're using show all the time, your writing may become long-winded and hard to follow. Telling can be used as a handy shortcut in your writing. Now it's time to put these strategies into action. Have a go at using one or more of the strategies discussed to write your own paragraph or two. If you're stuck for ideas, you might like to have a go at improving this paragraph by rewriting it so it shows instead of tells. If you like, share your work in the comments. Hope to see you soon for the next lesson. EasyTeaching.net